So we're back um, with another brief video. We're going to discuss the uh, Hoshizaki float switch. Most people on the internet search for um, Hoshizaki ice thickness control, but it's actually called the float switch. So I want to give you um, three things about this switch, basically the purpose, um, some basic checks, and how to adjust it. Uh, it's not too complicated, just pretty straightforward. So right here is the float switch. Okay, this is the top of it, side view, and the bottom view. Okay, uh, we'll break it apart in a few minutes here. Um, but basically, the purpose of this float switch, um, there's two things. One, to check to see if the machine has enough water in the reservoir before the free cycle starts. No water in the reservoir, there's no point in making any ice. So it kind of serves as a safety function. Second, when the water level drops, it must be assumed that that water has now turned into ice on the evaporator plate. Therefore, when the float drops to that spe specific point, it's going to trigger the ice machine into the harvest cycle, at which point um, the defrost timer counts down and defrost uh, starts or harvest starts and ice falls off your plate. So that's pretty much it. Um, so check, some basic checks. So if you're having problems with the machine um, going off on a three beep alarm or a max freeze alarm or something like this, um, you know, it could be basically that you have a lot of scale buildup or debris built up here and it's not allowing this float to basically move freely so the float may never drop if it's jammed up in there with debris. So there's a retaining rod here, you're going to pull that apart and take it out and then the float will come free. So inside you can see the little rod here, the float just kind of rides on that, it's a magnetic switch. Um, you want to make sure if you have it upright like this that the float moves up and down freely. Okay. Once you get that cleaned out and good to go, you can go ahead and retest if you were having a problem with those error codes I mentioned before. Okay. <clears throat> so here's a breakdown I have for you just in case you needed to see something a little bit more visual. Here's the float here itself again, and here's the internal. Um, breakdown of it. Um, here's pieces. At the bottom of your float, the bottom of this piece here, there is a boot. This boot here. Couplings over this and this rubber hose attaches to your reservoir. So now the, the water level in the reservoir will be the same in your float. So as the water level in your reservoir drops, so does the water level in your float. Okay, And vice versa when water fills up in the reservoir okay so this you want to be sure this is also clean and the little PVC connector piece at the end here that actually attaches to the reservoir it's just a hole with a little nipple on it you want to be sure that thing is really clean as well because if water if it's jammed up water can't feed into the boot and get into the float okay so <clears throat> you can adjust this float either up or down. There's two screws that you'll loosen up and you can either slide it up and by sliding it up you're going to decrease the cube size. If you slide it down you're going to increase the cube size, the cube thickness. If you have to take the float off to do your maintenance and you're okay with the cube size as is, I would mark your point here with a pin or a marker and then take off your float that way when you put it back on later you're not trying to figure out where the heck you you took it off at or what level it was at okay um, that's pretty much it if you guys are new um, to the machine you'll find it at the front of the ice machine after you take your front cover off you'll usually on the KM series you'll find the water pump here and here is the float switch right here. Okay, there's your two screws. Here's your boot. Behind this area is your reservoir. Um, that's where it is. 
be sure you pay attention to where the hoses go when you take a thick thick thing apart because uh, you can't put them backwards um, and last thing is make sure you empty the reservoir out completely before you take this out because there again the boot is attached to the reservoir so when you take that boot off water is going to start spilling out of your reservoir and onto your feet so we don't want that anyway um, that's all I have thanks for watching